Hi, I wanted to talk with you today about how my husband John and I went about choosing our RV and then how we went about making it our own. First we discussed the type of RV we would need to fit what we wanted to do. Our plan was to travel extensively through the southwest in California for an extended period of time. We knew that we wanted to stay under the 30 foot length limit for camping in many of the state and county parks and based on years of experience John and I knew that we liked to enter an RV through a rear door leading into a living room with large windows we like natural light and to take advantage of views we preferred a built-in dinette versus a table and chairs and a sofa to armchairs our search began we looked online and we went to dealers in our area to look at different models. Eventually, we came upon a 29-foot fifth-wheel trailer, a Jazz trailer, that we really liked. Upon entering through the, the RV's rear door, we immediately loved the large windows, the wooden cabinetry and trim, and the Tahitian motif. Cabinets and drawers seemed plentiful for storage. The kitchen looked modern with the faux marble counter. The entertainment system was a good configuration and height for television viewing from the sofa. The bedroom area had floor to ceiling space tall enough for standing and there was a wardrobe in the hallway. We wanted enough space for hanging clothes in the event that we needed to go to work for a period of time from the RV. We ordered our RV from the dealer that day and they promised that they'd have it for us within a matter of weeks. Once the Jazz arrived, it was time to set about making it our own. John and I discussed what it would take to make it really comfortable and we agreed on less than 10 immediate alterations and additions. The first project was to remove the flimsy particle board platform that held the bed mattress and replace it with a strong, slatted, breathable, and longer platform that John built. Having two dogs, it was important to install a vacuum system that could handle one or two vacuums a day. The vacuum also needed to be chargeable for times without electricity. We chose a 12 volt Electrolux and installed it at the end of the wardrobe out of the way but handy. The next few fixes were installing a corner shelf under the medicine cabinet and above the sink that would give us that little bit more needed counter space. We put, our, we put up several sturdy hooks in the bedroom and bathroom for hanging damp towels and clothing. We changed out the glass shower door for a shower curtain for more space when showering. We had learned that it's not fun bumping and banging the elbows. Since we were going to be in a cooler, moist climate for the winter, we chose to install electric heaters to use instead of the propane furnace when we had the option. We preferred the quiet, even temperature provided by electricity. We mounted an oil-filled electric heater up front in the bedroom and mounted an air circulating heater on a cabinet wall in the living area. We found in the past that a toaster takes up too much counter space and is not that versatile. A toaster oven attached to the underside of a kitchen cabinet not only saves counter space but allows an alternative to cooking in the propane oven. We love this addition. We wanted a place to store and charge both our laptops, so we added a shelf and outlets in one of the cabinets above the dinette area. We put skid resistant foam on the shelves to hold the laptops in place while traveling. John and I have traveled extensively since getting the Jazz. And we love it. We love it just as much today as we did the day we took it home. What we learned is that some, with some forethought and a little bit of ingenuity, traveling in a personalized RV can be one of the greatest pleasures in life. Happy travels, my friends.